Greetings, this is Pastor Lance Lee of Fresh Showing House of Worship, The Promised Kids Kingdom. I am really glad to be back with you again today with another important topic in the Deal With It series. And to introduce today's topic, I've got two wonderful young ladies that are going to help us out today. This is I and Shay, both members of The Promised Kids Kingdom for years now. Take it away, girls. Hi, my name is Aya. Hi, my name is Shay. And today's memory verse is, Don't be dejected and sad, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Nehemiah 8.10. Thank you for listening. Bye. Great job, girls. That was very good. Absolutely. Yep. Very good job. And again, what they said, Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, God does not want us to stay sad or dejected, but because the joy of the Lord is our strength, God wants to help us get past being that way. Today we're dealing with an important topic called depression. It's what happens when you feel sad and you stay sad, and the sadness continues. Depression is really serious. A lot of people deal with it, and you may battle it at some time. You may even battle it now. So what do we do about that? Well, we need to address it. So to do that, I want to tell an awesome Bible story about one of my favorite people. This is a guy many of you will recognize when we bring up this picture right here. This, of course, is David as a young boy taking out the giant Goliath. Very famous story from the Bible. Very powerful moment. One of my favorite. Well, the thing is, there's more to this story. Matter of fact, after that happens, things are going great for David. He comes back. The whole nation is celebrating. Everybody's cheering his name. It's good. Things are really good. He just took down the giant. That's awesome. Well, not only that, but he makes a great friend in the king's son, Jonathan. And he gets put in a position in the army. He begins to go out and lead battles with men, even as a young man. And it's successful. David does very well. He serves God, loves God, and God blesses him. Things go good. Matter of fact, so good that he gets the attention of a rather attractive young lady who happened to be the king's own daughter. The Princess Michael. Yes, that was her name, Michael. I know. But anyway, David de naturally, definitely would like to marry her if possible. And word comes that the king's open to this idea. Matter of fact, the king has an interesting challenge. He said, David, if you go and take out 100 of our enemies that are causing so much trouble, the Philistines, if you'll take out 100 of them, I'll give you my daughter's hand in marriage. So David's like, yes, I definitely want to do that. So he goes out, and it goes really well. He doesn't just take out 100, he takes out 200. So yes, he ends up winning her hand in marriage, they get married, and things are great. Well, not so much. You see, somebody is not thinking too good about David, and it happens to be somebody very important. It's King Saul. Saul actually, years before, had disobeyed God. He had made a mistake, rejected the Lord, and consequently, God had pulled his presence back from Saul. And the Lord told him through the prophet Samuel that day was coming that his kingdom would be taken away because he had disobeyed the Lord and he never truly repented of it. So Saul was brooding about that and just it just bothered him. Well, lo and behold, here comes David and he's very popular and it's clear God is with David because David honors the Lord. And Saul begins to get jealous, so jealous he begins to plot on David. You see, David would come and, um, and play for Saul sometimes and he would begin to feel better. Well, Saul still, even though David did things to help him, was brooding and plotting on David. Even to the point that that little challenge to get David to win the hand of his daughter, that was actually a trick by Saul, trick by Saul to get David to die. He wanted David dead. Didn't work, of course. David did very well. So now one day, David's playing his harp for Saul, and Saul's sitting there, and instead of feeling better, which he normally did every time David played, Saul began to get more and more angry. So angry, he's holding that spear, he's looking at David, he's like, I just, uh, and his anger came so much, he took the spear and he threw it at David, trying to kill him. Well, naturally, David missed it, and he runs out of there. He runs back home, he tells Michael, Michael, your dad just tried to kill me. Oh my goodness. So, there's only one thing to do, he's got to get out of town. He escapes through a window, he leaves his wife and his home, and he runs away. Where's he going to go? Well, there's not many places he can go. People are looking for him now. The king is actively trying to kill him. And some people are willing to help the king to hunt David down. He's in danger. So he even takes a step to go to another country, the country of the enemies, the enemies Philistines. He goes there thinking, well, Saul can't find me here. And maybe the Philistines won't really recognize who I am. Yeah, well, they recognize who he was. And David realized pretty quick he's in a bad situation. So bad he takes a desperate step. He just, it's kind of gross, but he lets stuff 
spill down on his beard. He begins to bang his head against the wall and act like an animal and just behave like a crazy man. And in the process, of course, the king sees that and says, this guy's nuts. Get him out of here. I don't need another crazy person in my kingdom. So David flees. He gets away. And he goes and he ends up in a cave called the Cave of Adullam. And here he is. He really has a lot of reasons to be down. You could say he has the caveman blues. It's understandable. He's lost his wife, who he loves. He's lost his home. He's left all his friends. He has nothing. And his people are trying to kill him. Those most powerful man in the world at that time in his life was trying to kill him. What's he going to do? Well, David did something that was very good. He turned to God. And it's a great example of what we should do whenever we're feeling down and sad. We shouldn't run away from God. We need to run to Him. And that's what David did. The Bible records that David, in that cave, wrote a beautiful song to God. He sat down and he talked to God and he wrote a song. And I want to read you a few of those verses. This is Psalms chapter 34, right here. A beautiful song. And I would love to encourage you to read it sometime. But here we go. In chapter 1, chapter 34, verse 1, he says here, I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak His praises. That's amazing considering what he's been going through. He's had so much go wrong. And he says, I'm going to constantly speak God's praises. Look at this. He says, I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. He definitely was in a helpless moment. But he's saying, hey, let's take heart in God. And he goes on to say, come, let us tell the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt His name together. He's worshiping and praising God. And he says in verse 4, I pray to the Lord and God answered me. He freed me from all my fears. David had every reason to feel afraid, yet he turned to God and God was helping him. And let's keep reading. He says, those who look to God for help will be radiant with joy. That's a promise that joy is coming if you turn to the Lord. They will not have no shadow of shame, will darken their faces. And in my desperation, I prayed and the Lord listened. He saved me from all my troubles. Now that's very powerful. You can keep reading the rest of the verse. It's an amazing chapter. So here's David in this situation. He turned to God and he began to feel the joy and strength of God. That's a powerful lesson for us. So what should we do? I've got a few points to help us with this. When you feel sad and you feel depressed, because I'm telling you, everybody at some point feels sadness in their life and you don't want to let it turn into depression. You want to get past that. God desperately, definitely wants you to get out of depression. So what should we do? Well, the first thing you should do is this. Very important point right here, and that is sometimes it's okay to cry. If you're really sad, it's okay to let people know you're sad. It's even okay to cry in your grief. I know in the last year or so, my father passed away, and I felt tremendous sadness that time. And yeah, I actually cried. I felt it. And I realized, and some people told me, said, Lance, it's okay to take a moment and grieve for your loss. The Bible even said there's a time to weep. There's a time and season of sadness. Okay, but the good thing is this, we're not to stay there. God wants us to get it out, but it's okay to take a moment and grieve. David definitely did, and that verse right there in Psalm 34, in another version, it says, I cried to the Lord. David wasn't afraid to express his sadness to God, and you shouldn't either. You should turn to God and let him know all your sadness. God wants you to tell him. He wants you to pray to him like that. But look at the second point. The second point is very, very important, and that is what David realized, I'm not alone in this cave. He was alone in this cave. You're not alone where you are either. God is there. You've got to understand that God prays a promise. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Jesus promises that. That if you turn to him and follow him, he's going to be with you. He's not going anywhere. The devil and the enemy is going to try to make you feel so alone. Nobody, nobody understands. I'm all alone. Nobody's going through this. That's not true. God says, I'm with you. And it goes on in that chapter 34, David talked about it. He said, God is near to the brokenhearted. God is. If you reach out to Him, you'll realize He's very much there. And that brings us to a third point. And that is, God hears me when I call. I'm telling you, God is listening. In other places it talks about the Lord hears the cry of the righteous. He hears our prayer. If you'll reach out to God and pray, God will hear you. But you need to talk to Him. You need to pray to Him and let Him hear what you're, what you're feeling. The Bible makes this promise. Jesus talked about it. He said, I've come to heal broken hearts. I've come to bind up wounds. That's what God wants to do. You're hurt and your wounds, 
God wants to heal them, and he wants to give you something. It makes a promise. Jesus said, I've come to bind up wounds, heal broken heart, and give the oil of joy for gladness. That brings us to our fourth important point, and that is the joy of the Lord is your strength. God wants to strengthen you in your sadness. There's a powerful promise that you will experience joy if you turn to the Lord in your sadness. If you'll begin to praise God like David did, if you'll begin to worship him and give him thanks, God will come and you'll have something supernatural happen. You'll begin to experience God's joy. I promise you, if you'll turn to him, God promise you that, that the joy of the Lord come, you'll turn, turn to him. There's a verse in Psalms, another place David wrote, he said, weeping can go for a night but the joy of the Lord will come in the morning. There may be a seed of time when you're sad, but God says, no, 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 I'm not leaving you like that. If you'll turn to me, I'll step in and I'll take your sadness and I'll turn it into joy. And I want to encourage you to do something else right now. And that is do something the Lord has had me do the last few years a good bit. And that is be thankful. The Bible promises in the book of Philippians, it says that if we will pray whenever we're anxious and worried about anything or down, if we'll pray with thanksgiving, giving thanks to God, the Bible says he will turn that. He will give peace. Peace will come to you. Joe will come to you. God will give you if you'll begin to give thanks. So just begin to thank the Lord for what he's done for you. And you do have some things to be thankful for. I know that. So let me bless you right now. Father, I pray over everyone here that's watching this. I just ask you to touch them supernaturally. Step in right now where they're at. Whatever sadness or difficulty or sorrow or frustration they've experienced, I pray right now, Jesus, that you would move in their heart, that you would touch that situation and turn it right now for the good, that joy would come. I bless them in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now I've got a really special treat, someone I love very much, my precious wife, Liz. She is going to come, and she's going to show you what she does when she feels kind of down. Take it away. Hey, guys and gals out there. How you doing? Well, I'm Liz, and I'm so excited to be here with you all today. So, Pastor Liz said that I was going to show you guys something that I do when I feel sad or down, or I'm just kind of gloomy gus, and, you know, the devil's just trying to come at me, you know. Okay, well, one thing you can do is tell a really funny joke. Like, um, why did the pickle cross the road? Uh, okay, forget that one. That one wasn't funny. That was stupid. Because pickles can't walk. They don't have legs. Or arms. Or face. Or anything. Because you eat them. So, that doesn't make sense. Forget that one. But, something I also love to do is to play music. <laughs> So, all you got to do is start thinking about all the things that God has done for you in the past that He's doing now. And even if you feel kind of sad because, I mean, look at what's all going on in the world today. It's pretty crazy, right? I mean, you can't even go see your family like you used to or your friends or even go to the store and stuff. It's just really weird. We never thought we would see this in our lifetime. However, we've got to keep ourselves feeling joyful. So, like Pastor Stan, you've got to do it with a thankful heart. you just got to focus on all the good things that God's doing. So like, for instance, if you woke up this morning and you woke up in a soft bed and you woke up with a roof over your head, guess what? You're really, really blessed. If you had like a mom or a dad who hugs you and tells you you're awesome, you're super extra blessed. So you know what? The best part is that we have a God who loves us and He cares for us. And so we need to tell them how thankful we are. So I would do something like this. something wonderful that God has done for me and how happy that makes me feel because he is amazing and he is worthy to be praised so just think about all the good stuff you know like you've got your favorite toy you've got a great home you've got someone at least one person who thinks you're amazing and who can give you loves and hugs and that's awesome and you've got God who not only loves you but he died for you so that's awesome 
just remember about that, okay? And if you can't play a song for yourself like me, grab your phone. I know you got a phone. Somebody's got a phone. Grab a phone and put on your favorite happy song. And then just start like dancing and singing and running around in the house. And I know, I know you'll feel better in no time. So we love you guys and we think you're amazing. And thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.